So here we have some very simple code in Python. We have a variable x and a variable y set to the numbers 5 and 10. And if we print x plus y and execute this program, you can see at the bottom we get 15. So the plus operator in Python when it's applied to numbers is going to add those two numbers together. But if we change x and y to strings, for example, x is Python and y is rules, if we then re-execute this program, you can see we get the string printed at the bottom. So the behavior is different for this operator depending on the types here. And this is a concept known as operator overloading. Now, Python is one of the most flexible programming languages out there and operator overloading and also the data model in Python objects is a large part of why that's the case. And it turns out that even with our own user defined objects and classes, we can use these kind of operators and they can perform some kind of behavior that we define in the definition of that class. And we're going to look at that later in this video. So these operators can be customized to work with almost anything. And we'll see an example in Django, which is a popular Python web package. And we'll also look at more built-in standard library examples. So hopefully in this video, we're going to extend our knowledge of Python a little bit further when it comes to object-oriented programming and also these operators. Now, before we go on, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page that's linked just below the video. And if you want to become a member and show your support, we've opened memberships as well, and you can find the join button just below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So we saw the example of the plus operator here working with numbers to add them together and then working with strings to add the two strings and concatenate them into a new string, as you can see at the bottom. And this is going to work with all sorts of different types. For example, if we define two lists here for X and Y, when we execute this, you can see at the bottom that it's combined those two lists and it's produced a new list with all of the elements from X and all of the elements from Y. So again, this is operator overloading, depending on the type, in this case, X is a list. Previously, they were numbers and strings. The plus operator is behaving differently. So it doesn't always mean numerical addition as it would be with numbers. Depending on the type, it can actually do anything. And this is defined by a method on the type. And we're gonna look at that method just now. And it's called a magic method in Python. So what I'm gonna do is remove this and we're gonna define a variable called result. And we're gonna take the variable X, which is a list, and we're going to call the dunder add method or the magic add method here. And we're going to pass in Y to that. So this is a magic method. It's defined on the Python data model. And then if we print the result to the terminal and execute this program here, you can see we get the same result as we got before when we used the plus operator. So the behavior of that plus operator when it's applied to objects of a particular type is defined by that objects dunder add method. We'll look at practical examples of these magic methods a little bit later on. Now I want to look at some similar examples and this time with sets in Python. So here we have two sets of numbers, X and Y, and we can look at different operators for sets. So what I'm gonna do is print something to the terminal here and we're gonna take the set X and we're gonna take the intersection of X and Y. Now the behavior of this operator again depends on the types with which it's being used on. So when it's used with two sets, it's gonna take the intersection of those so let's execute this program and you can see the intersection containing the numbers two and three from these two sets. But this can also be a bitwise and operator in Python when it's used with integers. So again, the behavior depends on the types and we're gonna see an example with Django later in this video where we use this operator on query sets. And it turns out that sets in Python have a number of these operators. So we're gonna look at some of them now. We've already seen intersection with the ampersand. We can take the union of two sets with this pipe operator and we can also get the difference between X and Y using this minus operator. And of course the minus operator has a well-defined meaning when it's used with numbers as well. So let's execute this and we can see the intersection, the union and the difference between the sets X and Y. So I mentioned a second ago that we can use these operators with Django query set objects and those are specific to Django. They're defined by the Django package. They're not built into Python. So how does the Django query set class take these operators and perform customized behavior based on the operator? That's what we're going to look at just now. And in doing so, we're going to see how we can apply these overloaded operators to our own Python classes. And that's going to help us write more flexible and intuitive programs. Now, I mentioned earlier that the magic methods that you define on a class will determine the behavior of these kinds of operators. And that's because these operators are not hard coded at the syntax level in Python. Instead, they actually map to special methods. And we already saw the dunder add method. So I'm going to put on the screen some more of these just now. The plus operator will map to the dunder add method. The minus operator will map to the dunder sub method. And that is what we're using here, as you can see in the difference between two sets. We also have the multiplication operator that's mapped to a dunder mul method. 
and this ampersand here is mapped to a dunder and method and the pipe is mapped to a dunder or method. Now I want to look at a practical example here and we're going to use Django but in a second we're also going to look briefly at things like pandas. So let's open the Django source code and we're going to look at the query set class. This is a very commonly used class in your Django applications. It represents a database lookup for a set of objects. Now if we go down here we're going to find some of these magic methods and we can already see dunder methods like deep copy here. But if we scroll down a little bit further here, and eventually I'm going to find this if we scroll further down. And finally I have it, the dunder and method. This dunder and method defines the behaviour when you take query set 1 and you use the ampersand operator, and then query set 2 at the right hand side of the operator. This basically defines the query set intersection, so it takes the elements from query set 1 and then it combines them via the intersection with query set 2. So this is similar to set intersection, but it's applied to query sets of Django models, and it uses that overloaded ampersand operator for query set objects. So here's an example on the screen now. Let's say we have a book model, and we filter the books where the author is equal to Alice. That gives us query set 1, and then we take the books that were released in year 2024. That gives us query set 2. We can then get query set 3 by taking the intersection of those two query sets, and that will give us the books by Alice that were published in 2024. And for the union of two query sets, we have the dunder or method, and you can see the pipe operator that that is applied to here. Now I also mentioned pandas, that's another library that uses operator overloading quite heavily. So let's look at an example just now. I have a data frame here containing some data with a name and an age column, and you can see that data below here. Now what if we wanted to find all people in this data frame whose age is greater than 30? Now the way we can do this with pandas is we can look at the age column and we can find the ones that are greater than 30 and what that gives us back is a result that contains true and false values for each row in the data frame. Now this is not just a simple comparison, for example if I was to write this statement here this would return false as you can see. So when one number is greater than another number it's going to return true or false, just a single value, but in this case we get back a series in pandas containing boolean values. And under the hood, what that's calling is the dunder greater than method, another part of the Python data model. And you can define this method on your own classes to perform that comparison logic. And in the case of pandas, it's changing what's returned from the statement, not just a single Boolean value, but it's actually returning a series of Booleans in this case. And there's lots of other examples you can think of in Python packages. For example, in NumPy, if you multiply two NumPy arrays together, that is going to overload the multiplication operator to perform a vectorized multiplication of array 1 and array 2. So this concept of operator overloading allows you to write clean code that nicely expresses an operation in Python. And if we bring this example back where we look at the age column, you can see that that is nice and concisely expressed. And we don't need to create, for example, a loop that goes over each record in the data frame and then performs individual comparison. Instead, we have an operation that's applied across the entire age column. Now I want to move on to look briefly at our own example, admittedly a little bit of a contrived example, but we're going to look at that in VS Code just now, so let's open that up. And I'm going to remove all of this and I'm going to define a class in here, and let me minimise this and paste the class in, it's called Playlist. So imagine we're creating some kind of music application and we have a playlist model here, or a playlist class, and then we create instances from that class at the bottom here. So for example, Rock Classics, Scandinavian Black Metal and Chill Vibes. These are all playlists and they contain a set of songs and these songs are stored on self.songs which is a set and that's an instance variable on the class. Now with these playlists that we have at the bottom we might want to overload the AND and OR operators and create new playlists that contain a certain combination of the songs, for example a union or an intersection of playlist 1 and playlist 2. And in the application you can imagine you've got two playlists that you really like and you want to create a union of the two of them and then that will be a new playlist with which you can add to your library. Now let's start with the intersection. So for example, from playlist 1 we have song A, B and C. Playlist 2 has song B, C and D. So the intersection would contain song B and C which is in both playlists. And in order to define this logic we need to define a method here, another magic method, and it's the dunder and method. So dunder and takes self and it also takes another playlist which we'll call other playlist here and that's going to be of type playlist. 
and that's going to return a playlist object as well. And we need to surround the playlist in quotes here because this is actually self-referential. So I'm just going to pass on this just now. The reason we need to surround this in quotes is because we're actually defining this inside the playlist class and we're giving it a type of playlist. This is a forward reference to the same model which is not fully defined yet. So that's a separate piece of knowledge there. When Python actually reads this signature here, the playlist class has not been fully created yet. So we need to surround the type hint in quotes. Now what does it mean here to take the intersection of two playlists? We're going to keep this simple here. We're going to take the songs from playlist one and then the songs from the other playlist and we're going to perform an intersection of those. And we need to define a new playlist that's going to contain a new name and a new set of songs. So inside the magic and method, we're going to return a new playlist object. So we're going to have two parameters here. I'm going to create an F string and combine the name of playlist one with the name of the other playlist. So the first playlist is going to be self.name. And let's use the pipe operator here and we're going to refer to other playlist.name. So we're just combining or concatenating those and separating it with a pipe. And then the actual songs are going to be defined by self.songs and we're going to take the intersection of that and other playlist.songs. And this should actually be the ampersand, not the pipe. So now we've defined the dunder and method. How do we actually use this? We can use it very simply by going to the bottom here. And I'm going to print something to the terminal. We're going to take playlist one and we're going to use the ampersand operator and combine that with playlist two to get the intersection. And we can only use this operator because we've now defined the dunder and method. So let's try this out and go to the terminal and see what's printed out. And you can see that at the bottom, I'm actually just going to clear this and print this again. So we have a combination of rock classics and Scandinavian black metal. And we have the intersection here of song B and song C. And that is what we expected from playlist one and playlist two. If we take the intersection of one and three, let's change this to three here. The only one that's common to both is song C. So if we execute this again, we're going to get just song C in the resulting playlist. And similar to dunder and, we can also define the dunder or method for the pipe operator. And we've changed the ampersand to a pipe operator to get the union of the songs from this playlist and the other playlist songs. So let's try this out at the bottom. If we change this to the pipe operator, we can now use that because we've defined the dunder or method. So let's go to the terminal, clear this out and run the program. And you can see this time we get the union of playlist one and playlist three. So it's very simple to take the classes that you have in your application. And you can define these magic methods if you need to express logic intuitively using these operators. And this applies to plus, minus and so on. Here we're just using it similarly to the set union and set intersection operators. And one benefit of doing this is that when you start adding these magic methods, you can actually encapsulate some complex conditions. So for example, if we wanted to get the intersection of the songs in playlist one and playlist two, and then take the union of that intersection and the songs in playlist three, we could also do that. And if we go to the bottom and execute this, you can see the results we get from that operation. So we now combine these in different ways and that is going to work out of the box in Python. So that's very versatile and very flexible and it can help you write nice applications that express these things very intuitively. Now there's two more methods I want to look at. So for completion, when it comes to sets, I want to also look at the dunder sub method. So what this is going to do is you subtract the songs from another playlist and that's going to leave you only with the songs in the instances playlist, but not the songs that were also in the other playlist. And we can see this dunder sub method in action if we go to the bottom here. So if we take playlist one and subtract playlist three, playlist one you can see has songs A, B and C, Playlist three has songs C and E. So we expect song C to be subtracted out of the playlist for playlist one. Let's try this out and execute the program. And you can see the set that's returned here only contains songs B and A. So that's how we overload the subtraction operator on a class. We just define the dunder sub method and then we implement the logic we need for that operation. Now, one final example here, I want to show how we can compare the lengths of two playlists by the song count in each one. So what we can do is we can also overload comparison operators. One such method is the dunder less than method. And that is gonna have a similar signature as we saw before. So dunder less than is going to take the instance and it's gonna look at another playlist. And what we want to implement here is some kind of check that determines if the instance is less than the other playlist. So it's a bit of a weird one, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at the length of self.songs and that's the number of songs in the set for the current instance. And we're going to check, is that less than the length of the other playlist's set of songs? 
And if that's the case, it's going to return true, otherwise it's going to return false. So that's a simple piece of logic that expresses how you take one playlist and check if it's less than another, just by looking at one of the instance variables, in this case the set of songs, and comparing the values. So if we look here at playlist 1, and we check if that's less than playlist 3, if you look at the playlist that we have above here, what do you expect this to evaluate to, true or false? So I'm going to clear the terminal and let's execute this program and you can see that it evaluates to false. And the reason for that is because playlist 1 has 3 songs, playlist 3 has 2 songs, so 3 is not less than 2, therefore this evaluates to false. Now if we change the order here and we compare the third playlist to the first one, we're going to see that this evaluates to true, as you can see on the terminal. So that is operator overloading. We can take these operators in Python and we can define magic methods inside our Python classes to determine the behavior for these operators on our custom data types. And this works with built-in types like strings, floats, integers, and sets and lists and so on. But importantly, it also works with your own objects. We saw examples with Django query sets and also pandas data frames in series. And also custom objects that you define in your application, you can overload these operators to perform operations logically and intuitively using nice Pythonic syntax. So this is super useful for constructing object-oriented operations in a Pythonic manner. And it's highly flexible too, as we've seen in this video. And if you want to know more, check out the Python data model for more information on what's available. So thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, then check out our coffee page. I'll leave a link to that just below the video. And thanks again to everyone who has supported the channel. And we'll see you soon in the next video.